Today we're getting in on the ground floor of the next computing revolution, a com company that's not just talking about quantum, they're also shipping it. Today we're doing a deep dive into Quantum Computing Inc. and why this could be the next quantum stock you need to buy. But before you click buy, we'll break down the fundamentals, the recent earnings report, and why the market might be missing something. Quantum Computing Inc. Tinker Symbol QUBT is currently trading at just around $12 a share after it reported its Q3 earnings today. They described themselves as an innovative photonics and quantum optics technology company that provides accessible and affordable quantum machines and foundry services. In plain English, this basically means that they're building the hardware, the chips, the foundry pipeline for photonic quantum hardware, which is not just the algorithms that they're backing it up. Their tech is designed to operate at room temperature and with low power, which if delivered could be a major differentiator on the market. They're positioned perfectly at the intersection of both quantum computing, cybersecurity, and AI. This gives them a multi-pathway narrative of quantum machines, photonic foundry, and quantum security solutions. While in this video I will focus on the fundamentals, the market's recent reaction is still worth noting. QBT stock has, has drawn a lot of attention after it released its earnings today, and in this they released two big catalysts as we've seen. They reported this revenue of 384000 which is up from 100, 101,000 in Q3 2024, seen as a 280% increase. And they, they ended the quarter with, with uh, cash and investments for over $1.5 billion. This is uh, gives them a lot of runway in the f f coming months. And operationally, they announced a big order also from a top five U.S. bank for their quantum cybersecurity solutions, which is the first U.S. commercial sale of that offering. And as we can see here, the purchase offer was for 332000 And it is one of the first ones to be seen on the market happening with, with the big banks, such as maybe J.P. Morgan, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Citibank, one of these big guys have, have a lot of trust. Not only this, but we've seen the partnership that recently came out with Nat NASA's Langley Research Center. This has kind of been a, a goal to develop quantum-based techniques to remove solar noise from space-based uh, data for more reliable daytime atmospheric sensing. This is absolutely massive and it shows that they're working towards solar noise reduction. So the news flow is very positive as well as this revenue revenue acceleration and a strong balance sheet it, it shows that we're moving in the right direction as a company and i think there's a lot to be looking forward to here especially as we move into the key metrics for this quarter the revenue jump of 280 percent is a, is an absolute massive jump to to be seeing at such an early uh, rate in the company and obviously the revenue base is still extremely small in terms of absolute terms because it's only three hundred eighty four thousand but it's growing rapidly percentage-wise, which is one of the main things I want to point out. The gross margin of 33% versus 9% in last year, this shows that gross margin can vary at current revenue levels, and I think it will be uh, something important to watch in the future. Operating expense of, of $10.5 million, this is um, versus their $5.4 million last year, which is indicating a ramped investment in R&D, manufacturing, and engineering, which is important as it continues to far outstrip revenues as expected in a pre-scale quantum hardware business. The net income of $2.4 billion, $2.4 million, I wish it was billion, uh, in Q3 2025 versus a net loss last year. This is um the positive income was pro primarily due to a $9 million derivative liability. Uh, which was made, but uh, in in terms of general terms, I think they're moving in the right direction. And as we've seen, this li this strong liquidity as well with the 1.5 billion in cash and cash equivalents is a major positive, and it gives them runway uh, optionality and less immediate dilution pressure. Also, that. The liabilities are not that high. It's only at 20 million versus 46.3 million last year, and this this builds into the the commercial traction as we see with the NASA partnership, the bank PO, and this supports the narrative of execution just beyond coming right around the corner here. Also, I want to point out the sentiment. All the price ratings that we've seen in the near future have been in higher ranges than it is currently at. It is currently trading at, well, $12 after hours, but 10 it closed at $10.60, and the averages are at $15 and $20, at $40. The main uh, one that just uh, raised their capital is to the ascendant uh, capital and i think once more ratings come in it is still very early stage and heavily capital expensive so you may not f find 
full analyst coverage reports yet, but the strong liquidity and partnerships might draw interest from uh from other companies in the in the coming weeks and I think we might see more analyst ratings coming in this next week. As we see here, own institutional ownership is very low at only 44% and if we could see this continue to grow, I think the stock will grow uh, likewise. As we've seen, quantum has been a buzzword in retail investors often drive speculative premiums in quantum AI names. That said, the small revenue base and dilution risk are real and I think the the stock has kind of performed very well considering all this has been going on. Also, we want to point out the CEO has emphasized that they are working on technical execution, scaling manufacturing, and the foundry ramp. That suggests that management is focused on building real infrastructure and not just building up hype for people to invest their money in and possibly lose it. And as we've seen here, the stock has performed pretty well this year. And I think they, they're, they're straddling multiple themes of with the quantum computers, photonic, uh, and cybersecurity. That can be a strength. Uh, with our, our, our diffusing factor. But I think overall, it is still very early and many companies never scale to mass commercial uh, viability. So as we continue to see these partnerships come through, I think this, this could be a high risk, high reward uh, stock to be buying in the next coming weeks. If we're looking at the chart here, as I, as I was pulling it up early earlier, given the recent announcement and the positive liquidity update, I think, personally, I believe that you might be looking out for a breakout of momentum above recent swing highs. And this would include this this $14 range. Support zones are tied to the previous consolidation ranges. And so this kind of lays here at these 15s, the $16 ranges. And um, before the earnings release, then the that prior to the support. So before earnings release, obviously support was in the $10 range. So I don't see it going under there after we, such a strong earnings. And then as well, I also see it possibly hitting up to $17 a share on this next run. But because the stock is likely uh, trading in, in a speculative quantum uh, category, expect higher volatility. Uh, risk reward here is high, but so is potential drawdown if execution disappoints. But given the strong cash position, one could argue that the cash cushion reduces immediate dilution risk, which is a technical positive, and less downward pressure from future financings is a ma major point. So uh, I think that um, there's a lot of catalysts to be looking out for in the next coming months, and we could see the volume on the green days is much higher than that of that on the red days. So that is something to be very excited about. Here's my position. I do believe Quantum Computing Inc. deserves a place on the radar of all investors in the in the quantum space. The reason is that they're not just software or algorithmic. They have a foundry angle with the, the thin film lithium chip foundry, which could become a structural advantage if photonic quantum hardware scales. Not only this, but their liquidity is very strong. Over $1.5 in cash and investments gives them breathing room, optionality, and not less immediate dilution risk, which is a major advantage inside the world of quantum because, as we know, it costs a lot to get this up and running, and having this advantage will be absolutely massive coming in the next couple months. Also, the revenue acceleration and bank PO plus the NASA partnership are credible early validations of the product and its future in the market. However, and this is very important, this is a very high risk trade. The absolute revenue numbers are very tiny, 384,000 in a quarter for a stock that is nearly at 2.5 billion in market cap, million in market cap is effectively an early stage proof point but not commercial scale. They are still operating at net loss, large net losses, and there's a lot of execution risks. Because this is all, we've seen scaling all have long technical t timelines in this market. And it's something to keep an eye on as we could see potential pitfalls coming out of here. Quantum is still a, also a theme that has many, seen many hype cycles and disappointments being a front runner helps doesn't make that guarantee success. So if I were positioning myself for creating a position here, I treat this as a very small allocation in a speculative portion of my portfolio. For investors willing to ride the long term for like three to five years and absorb potential vol volatility and dilution. I would not treat this as a buy and forget safe stock. It's a high conviction bet on quantum hardware scaling with a big catalyst funnel, but also a long runway risk. So to recap, quantum is a compelling uh, 
play with multiple narrative threads and the Q3 2025 results show strong percentile growth, improved margins, and a robust balance sheet, which are all very positive. But uh, the main things I want to watch out for is the revenue, the loss profile, and the quantum space is still very early. So uh, despite this, they have the $1.5 billion in cash, which could be very useful in the future. If you found this video helpful, make sure you guys drop a like and subscribe. Ring the notification bell so you don't miss any deep dives in the future. Drop a comment. What do you guys think about quantum hardware? Will it become mainstream in three to five years? Why or why not? Let's discuss. Thank you guys for watching. Peace. Thank you.